Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! minutes after nine o'clock thank you for tuning in beautiful friday morning jim george is in the studio he is our professor gadget and he's here to answer your questions about your gadgets your cable and all things technological the number is 622-9622 jim is the owner of american cable services and he actually brought a, a fishing lure for doug too so <laughs> come on jim yeah, how you doing morning. that fishing segment was out of the park. That was good, huh? That was good stuff, huh? It was all scripted. Man, well, hell, man. <laughs> well, Jim said he was driving here, and then when he heard uh, you and Doug talking about lures, Jim turned around and drove back home. Oh, really? Just to get the yeah. lure, just to give to Doug. Nice. So thank you. Well, nice. I know how I am. I'm very forgetful. If I don't do it now, I may not do it. You know? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really not a fisherman, but, but I have tried lures, yeah. and I've tried shrimp, and shrimp work better. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the natural movement it's, of the fish. It's kind of funny, isn't it? It is. They sting you. Uh, they do. They shrimp, they sting your Yeah, fingers. if they snap at you. Yeah, yeah. you have that little okay. snapping thing going for them. It hurts you. So how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. So did you hear the story about the Comcast? Did you get any comments on that? What, was it Charter and Bright House, or was it Comcast? See, Comcast is abandoning a $45.2 billion purchase of Time Warner Cable. Okay. Um, so I wonder why. Well... Uh, Remember I said that Comcast was the worst for customer service, and Time Warner was right behind it. I think when Comcast oh, looked really? into Time Warner and said, you mean to tell me you guys have longer leads times than we do? You have <laughs> more turnaround on text than we do? We, you know, what, what are we buying here? So is this a case where, where big corporations really don't do the job as well as a small time? Like, you're a small guy. Right. And, and you, I mean, you're out there. If your customers have a complaint, you're right there. I mean, you, right just, there. you live a few miles away from all of them. So We, do, we try to do same-day service on everything, whether it's an install, a disconnect, an ad channel, takeaway channel, whatever it is, same day. You call in the morning, get it done that afternoon. Hmm. Now, sometimes it has to be the next day because we've already lined up people for that day. But that's the extent of it. You don't have to wait. You know, the, we'll send a tech out in a couple of weeks and evaluate your problem. So how does that work for you? Can we can we pick your brain about what you do sure. with the cable company? So you get you get the signals that you sell to your customers. Do you have one of those big dish antennas? Is that how you get the signals? We have multiple dishes and multiple antennas. Okay. So you, you grab the stuff off of the local airwaves as well as off the satellites. Correct. Now, do you have to pay them for that? Yes. So, oh, okay, so obviously you buy it from them and then you resell it to your customers. Right. And the reason the customers couldn't do it themselves is because it would be too impractical. You'd have to have all those dish antennas. Well, it would be that, um, but like even direct and uh, dish, they'll give you some local channels, but they won't give you all the local channels. In other words, they won't give you channel 51 in Ocala. Why? Because you're too close to it. If you're that close, they assume you can get it with rabbit ears or oh. something like that. So they'll give you the Orlando channels. But you won't get the Gainesville channels, or you may get the Gainesville channels through this, but not through direct. So, okay, so, so we give them all the channels: Inverness, Dan Allen, Ocala, my Orlando, all of them. Okay, so no, help me understand this. When I get my cable through a cable company like yours, mm -hmm. and you have an antenna that picks up a signal from a terrestrial TV station, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That I understand. How does the terrestrial TV station get its signal up to the dish? How does the dish network, how, how does channel two become part of that satellite that you're aiming your little dish at? Yeah, dish, dish and Direct worked that out years ago with the uh, local um, NBC, ABC affiliates type thing. They sent them a, um, most every broadcaster has an uplink downlink because remember NBC is sending signals from New York to every NBC facility. Right. All right. And then the NBC affiliate, let's say in Orlando, is sending that same signal back up so that a local event in Orlando could be telecast in New York. If they needed to use for their national right. broadcast. Right. So they already okay. have this uplink downlink situation going. Oh, and all DirecTV okay. did is said, okay, well, here's a sideband frequency I want you to use which won't interfere with yours and you send it to us. So they send it to a satellite, which DirecTV picks up, 
incorporates it into their circuit and sends it back up for direct tv or for dish i never knew that mm -hmm. and and do you have to pay for that What's, i mean well, right we, we only pay for the programming uh, the dish and direct put in all those millions of dollars to to make everything work oh, okay all right yeah and we carry we carry direct tv we carry dish tv uh, and then we also carry programming that is not carried by direct or dish really well no, so we could get your services with a dish uh, no, my services. Okay, maybe I don't understand what you mean by that. Well, ours are going to be on the internet. In other, oh, okay. In other words, we're going to give you a box. As a matter of fact, the box has been sent. I should have it Monday or Tuesday of next week. Right. And I'll bring it in here hopefully earlier, and we'll put a TV up, and you can see that you can get Arabic channels, Australian channels, German channels, Venezuelan channels. And, really? And uh, maybe 200 American channels. What, what doesn't matter what language it is for me. <laughs> I just look at the pictures. I, I tell you, those Portuguese ones. Are pretty, <laughs> pretty women. Cali <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, Jim, we have a, the phone is ringing, so let's take a phone All call. Right. Uh, hold on, let me push the button. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim. Yeah, Tim. Uh, I, w I would like to know: Does the digital antenna works with the older model television? I'll hang up and listen to your comments. Certainly. But what happened is when the older TVs, they all accepted what's called RF. You know, basically you had an RF antenna and it received it and it put it into the RF, the F connector or the coax connector on the back of your TV. The new TVs, they have a coax connector on the back, but they also have an audio and video input connector. They have an HDMI input connector. They have all these various input connectors. So when the local t television stations went digital, the only way an older TV could receive them is with a box called a D2A, Digital to Analog Adapter. And they were $49, and the government actually subs subsidized those, one for every home, whoever wanted to buy one. They would buy one, send their receipt in to the government, and the government would repay them back for short order. Once that time passed, then anybody who wants a D2A converter can buy it at Walmart, Best Buy. Everybody sells a D2A converter. So if you had a, uh, an older set and you bought one of the new $49 antennas at the flea market that have all these digital channels, um, it may have an input to a, a TV that your TV doesn't have. So what you would do is you would also buy a D to A converter and you'd put it into it and then it would take that digital signal, turn it around to an analog signal, which would be coax and you'll just put the coax right to your TV. So you'd have the antenna feeding the box, the box feeding the TV. Okay. And, and it sounds a little complicated. Would you be able to go out and help him with that if, if somebody called you? Yes, but it's very simple. Um, as a matter of fact, it's, it, it's, um, it, the antenna would be a directional antenna, uh, so it, you aim it south because it's so strong that although you're trying to get the Orlando channels, the Inverness channels, the Dan Allen channels, the Ocala channels would come in just as strong, and the Gainesville one would be just a little weak but when I say load a week, because it's digital, it would either be there or not be there, be there. Oh, you know, drop. And then what you do? That could be frustrating. Would, you would compromise, but you'd turn the antenna just enough so where it locked in. Right. But you still got the Orlando channels. Okay. And that's wow. it. And and is there a way to boost signals? Like you there used, is. used to be able to boost the the old TV channel. They actually the the people. I'm not. I don't even know the people at the flea market who they are, but I've seen their antennas and they're very reasonably priced and they're good models. And they have a model that actually has a D to A converter built in and an amplifier built in for 149. So you get the antenna, the amplifier, the market and the yeah, market Samarian huh. for like 149. Wow! And think about it, yes, yeah, that's like 60 channels you get forever. You don't have to pay for them for free. For free. Nice. And so if you just wanted the ABC, NBC, CBSs, which also come with me, my, this, you know, all the different movie channels that the me, broadcaster. My. So yeah, I don't, I don't even there's know one called are. Me Antenna, uh -huh. one's called My Antenna, one's called Just Antenna, huh. one's called um, uh, th This Antenna, you know. So all that means is it's coming off of an antenna, but it's a movie channel. So it has commercials, but you get to watch decent movies. Oh, wow. It's free. That is kind of cool. Very good, very good. That is amazing because even the commercials, that's not really annoying because you have to have a, uh, a bathroom break or you get a snack or exactly. something. <laughs> exactly. And you'll be able to, you know, to catch right up. So I think right. that's a very, very good idea. And a lot of people have bought TiVos, which are basically a device that will 
uh, record that channel so you could actually be recording one channel while you're watching another yeah mm-hmm. i gotta catch up with technology all right we'll take a little break speaking of catching up we'll catch up on the weather and uh, we'll be right back with jim george the phone line is open if you want to call jim the number is 622-9622 we'll be right back the weather is brought to you by myfwc.com safe boating is no accident partial sunshine for today and becoming breezy this afternoon high 79 to 86 tonight rather cloudy low 65 to 70 Partly sunny and warm tomorrow with a shower or thunderstorm around in the afternoon. High tomorrow, 87 to 90. And mostly cloudy, breezy, and quite warm on Sunday. Will be a shower or thunderstorm around with a high Sunday between 85 and 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Brian Thompson. Kenny's Place Nursery offers horticulture training for the mentally handicapped, and that makes them beautiful people in my book. And those beautiful people have some beautiful plants and flowers on sale, like annuals in four-inch pots for only $1 each, a three-gallon bottle brush plant for only $8, Confederate jasmine, three gallons for $8, how about azaleas, one gallon for only $4.25, and a two-gallon pot of knockout roses for only $17. Call 352-867-1213 for Kenny's Place Nursery. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Partial sunshine for today and becoming breezy this afternoon. High 79 to 86. Tonight rather cloudy, low 65 to 70. Partly sunny and warm tomorrow with a shower or thunderstorm around in the afternoon. High tomorrow 87 to 90. And mostly cloudy, breezy and quite warm on Sunday. Will be a shower or thunderstorm around with a high Sunday between 85 and 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Brian Thompson. Hey Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. All right, 17 minutes after 9 o'clock. Jim George is here. We call him Professor Gadget. He's very multifaceted. Uh, we can't focus on his technological know-how, and uh, that's what this show is about. So if you want to call 622-9622 is the phone number. And, um, yeah, things are changing. There was, there was something the other day I wanted to ask you about that I saw. How is this possible? No screen. They, they were showing TVs and computers of the future where they somehow project into the air? How yeah. does that even happen? How, yeah. what do you, there's got to be a surface, no? Am I, what am I no, missing? It's that holographic thing, like when you saw in Star Wars, where the, the lady said, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. Right, and, right. You know, it, it forms, it, it has a beam pattern, and it, it, it uh, oscillates at a certain frequency, and then a light hitting that frequency. So it goes like maybe 10 feet max and forms a, an image in the air because remember the air is not the absence of anything there you and i breathe in so much right in this room it's unbelievable right if we could see it you, you remember how a beam of light would come through in the early morning if you had curtains on and you could see the whole air is moving there's all these little things but in that the was air. dust right well we we might call it dust but it's more than just that it's it's huh. all kinds of microbes I mean, there's a whole bunch of names for this thing we call dust. But wouldn't it, wouldn't, okay, but if you, th- if you think about a light beam coming in from the sun, shining on the dog or whatever, yeah, it's translucent, it's transparent. I mean, you can see through it. I mean, how would that be, a, uh, how would that compete with what we have now? Well, the, the TVs now are so vivid and, and high definition. And oh, yeah, that. no, it wouldn't be as, it, starting out, it would never be as good as uh, bouncing off of something like bouncing off a wall, like, right, you know, right. like a projector bounces off of a wall or right. bounces off of a screen. But as they, as they more and more uh, uh, developed, it would be much, much better. By the way, did you see this video that is showing how they changed the bulb on an IMAX movie projector? No, I did not. Apparently, this is, this is a three- or four-man operation. You can't just change a light bulb. It's a, it's a big to-do when you have a, those IMAX projectors are huge. Yes. Have you ever seen one? Like 75 millimeter or something like that. I, I, don't, know, I don't know that, but, uh, but they were showing them. I mean, it was like a, as big as a, uh, like a small car. Yeah. The, the projector was huge. Yes. Who knew? Have you ever gone to an IMAX theater? I have once. I got a headache from it. I said never again. I think I went to one Man, once. Man, it's stuff moving all around. It's like 360 or something. It's really... So do they make many IMAX movies? IMAX? They, they do. 
a lot of see that's that's the 70 millimeter stuff you remember the eight millimeter and then you remember sure. 16 millimeter like in school right then you had the 35 millimeter which was uh what movie theaters use okay then they went out with 70 millimeter which was the precursor to imax and i think imax is like the 120 whoever out there knows so it's not me. digital it's actual film well it, it's it's got to be filmed some way and so that was filmed in a high resolution film now they have it digital they have the 4k huh. you know they just you remember how 4k was the latest thing I mean, there was it was there was high definition, which right. was 1K. Right. Okay, I didn't know. And that. there was 4K. Oh, okay. All right. Now there's okay. <laughs> now there's 16K. Oh wow. Sony is actually making 16K TV. But the light, the light bulb, that I, is still the same tech. I mean, we still need a light to to shine it onto a screen. I have to find that for you. I have to find the video. It's it's like a trending video right now. It shows these guys changing the light bulb in an IMAX projector. Yeah. Well, have you seen the one where the guy climbs the tower that changed the light bulb? Yes. Oh. Hello. <laughs> that is scary stuff. I mean, I'm watching this thing, right? And he's moving maybe a foot and a half each direction. He gets taller and taller. I wonder how much he gets paid. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you'd oh. have to pay a lot for me to go up there. Well, I changed the light bulb on an 850-foot antenna in West oh, Palm Beach wow. back in 1975. That's an 85-story building. And I charged the guy a dollar a foot. So I charged him $850 to go up and change the light bulb. When I got back down, it first of all, it was an eight-hour day. And when I got back down, I told him, I said, never again. He said, what? Hey, what I paid you? I said, I'm sorry. You want to go do it? You want If you can find somebody else, we'll do it for a dollar a foot. Gosh, what was that like being up there on a tower oh, 850 it, feet up yeah. in the air? Yeah, it, it moved. But the one in Orlando is 2,000 feet. Channel 2 in Orlando is a 2,000-foot antenna. Now try and change the antenna, the bite bulb on that thing. Two thousand feet. I mean, think about it. You you go maybe twenty feet, hand over hand, right, on a ladder. Okay. You you, right. got, you got to stop and pause. Right. Sure. Yeah. And then you go twenty more feet, and then you stop right. and pause, right. and twenty more. <laughs> but by the time you did a thousand feet, and you're only halfway up, you're exhausted. All right. So we need drones to change light bulbs. Well, they need a helicopter to change <laughs> for, us, for us fat boys. And you're hanging from your toes on the helicopter rack. I'm you know. telling you, it's it's very, very scary. And you promise yourself when you get down, you will never do this again. I don't care how much they're going to offer you. Wow. You never but you can it. say you did it at least. Yeah. I, I've never done that. Let's go to the phone. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Yes, good morning, Jim. See, uh, can you explain to me uh, with laser beam how, how where, did that, where, did they, where did they get that strength where they can blind like an airline pilot many thousands of feet up in the air? How come, how do they, how do they get so powerful, those uh, laser beams? Well, they have them different colors. You know, they have the red and they have the green, and right. that's a frequency. And so you can excite one frequency a lot easier than you can excite another frequency. In other words, it takes less power like a battery, um, um, a flashlight battery, to excite one color than it does another color. So you wouldn't see a blue. Blue doesn't have enough um, ability to be excited with that low a voltage. But you get the green and the red, like I have a red laser light, and uh, because it's a laser, um, I can, if it was dark right now and I pointed it at the seer sign from the window of uh, <clears throat> WOCA. You, you, would, you would see that red light, just like you do the guns. You know, they, you see in the movies how they are aiming at a person. You see the red light on their chest. That's just yeah. a little, that's just a little one and a half volt battery. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. It, I, but, it, it, it's amazing, you know, like just with a battery like that, uh, that it can be that strong. And, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, like I said before, airline pilots are we have a problem with people that are goofing off and doing that, and uh, it's just uh, it's an amazing thing. Uh, uh, is it getting like a little uh, like a flashlight light bulb at the end, or it's similar to a flashlight light bulb, but it's not actually one. Okay. You know they bounce. Are, are they readily available to go and buy them, like at Kmart or sure. uh, wherever? You can buy them, but remember it's against the law to point it at a car coming down the road or any kind of aircraft. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I went to the IMAX thing that I was looking at before. Um, it's a th it's a two thousand pound projector. Mm -hmm. The technicians have to wear face guards to in case the bulb explodes. Uh, there is xenon gas 
in the bulb, it right. reaches 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit during the, uh, the a movie while it's, while it's working. Right. Can you imagine wow. that? This is unbelievable. Right. And then they have all these reflectors that reflect that light. That's why it's called IMAX, because it... It, it, it's mirrors like everywhere. It takes uh, three and a half gallons of water to flow through it every minute to keep it cool. Holy mackerel. Yeah. These are, these are, this is big technology. Yeah, if I was doing it, I wouldn't just wear a face mask. I'd be wearing a full body armor. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, these people look like they're doing surgery. It takes, it's a 15,000 watt bulb. It was used to illuminate the space shuttle launch pad. Oh, the same. I guess they used the same bulb, huh? Oh. Why? What do they need that for? Well, I guess they want a lot of light. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just, I just, I'm so amazed by all this technology stuff. And uh, no, it, it's and it changes daily. I mean, I that's why I'm, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm actually hiring younger kids now because what what they take for granted every day, I'd have to take weeks to learn. Yeah, because they brought they're brought up with they it. Are. Right? I mean, the, they can do stuff with IP cameras and stuff that I I don't even know could exist. Yeah, what was what was the thing the other day that was new, Rob? When we were talking about there was something. Uh, oh my gosh! Never mind. I hate to bring up something that I forgot. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. On the air, the uh, keyboards. No, I, I mentioned yeah. that not the keyboard, oh, okay. but the picture. Yeah, we talked about oh, that yeah, already. The picture, the picture yeah, being hold, projected hold on, yeah, the onto nothing. Being projected, yeah. Hologram. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know yeah. what it was. It was an app for something. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. There's, but there's so many apps for they so are. many different things. Yeah. It's like you don't really recall. need several devices anymore. One device is all you need. Right. One device with a bunch of apps on them. <laughs> yeah, my wife's got an iPad, and she's just now basically learning to use it. Of course, all my children know how to use it perfectly. And she's always saying, well, I need to do so-and-so. My daughter will say, there's an app for that. <laughs> and she'll just download the app, and, you know, there it is. Like a translation app. You know, you can have a uh, Spanish to English, French to English, or whatever. You know, yeah, yeah. those are free apps. But but there still has to be some kind of hardware somewhere to keep all of this data that we put up in the cloud oh, or yeah. on OneDrive. There has to be some kind of physical equipment like we have on the desks, but something of a larger magnitude. There's huge rooms. I mean, these rooms are probably as big as the, all of WOCA 10 times over and nothing but servers. Mm -hmm. One server talking to another server talking to another server. Wow. Depending wow. upon what you're looking for, whether it's a star constellation, whether it's a satellite location, whatever it is, all, any information is on a server. Can I ask you a question? Do you, do you remember when uh, computer jargon included the word slave and, yeah. and they took away that word because it was, it was you know, has a bad connotation. Is that what a server is? The, the, the word no, slave? No. What, what, what was a slave? In, well, you in had a master and then you had a slave. So you have a server and you might call that the master. And then your terminal, the thing you have at your desk, that would be called the slave. Oh. Because you didn't have a computer under your desk. Uh, you may have had a, uh, uh, a sender of some sort, but it was going to the, the master. It was going to the, uh, the, the server. Oh, oh, my okay. God. But they stopped using that word, right, because it's had bad connotations. I, I guess some people quit using it. I, you um, still use I, it? I, well, I hear it all the time. So I, when you're in the computer world, you hear all the jargon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem we have is nomenclature. You know, I left the, the pop, and I drove over to the knock. And after the oh. knock, I, you go, what? Well, I left the point of presence device, and I drove <laughs> over to the network operations, you know. Uh -huh. And everything is acumens. And in, in, in two weeks, there's another one, and you... And you're having to act like you know what it means, but you do have no idea what it means. <laughs> oh, no. Do you have a uh, knot and a pop on the same uh, area like at Palm K? Well, if you ever drove down the road and you see these buildings and it may have a Century Link truck parked in front of it, there's one right in front of it on top of the world. Uh -huh. You know, about maybe 14 feet by 14 feet. That's a pop. That's a point of presence. That's where oh. the Century Link and, and, and AT and T brought their fibers to a point where they all meet. That's a point of presence. And then downtown, let's say at the Century Link head end, that's the network operations center. Oh. That's the knock. Oh, okay, then, okay. Yeah. Uh, wow, well, I love this conversation. Jim, always fun to have you in here. Well, thank you. Thank it's you for a, it's having a great, me. It's a great show for a Friday, I think. I think yeah. it's a beautiful day. Let me look at the sky. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, forget your technology. Go outside. It's Go beautiful outside. out there. Forget your video games. Sure. <laughs> Bring it with you. <laughs> thank you, Jim. What's your phone number? Number is 854-9795. All right. Have thank a you. great weekend, Jim. Thank, thank you. You too. All right. We'll be right back.
Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A regular day of classes after a shocking night for many at an Indiana high school. About a dozen people needed medical attention after a concert stage collapsed Thursday night at the high school in Westfield.